Hi, I'm Zach. Uh, I'm Greg. We are the founders of CurseCrypt. Yep. Uh, there are a couple other founders, but we are the ones that are going to show you this stuff today. Uh, hopefully in some other future videos, we'll show everybody else and talk about all the other cool stuff. Yeah, so uh, let's get right into it. Um, why don't we start with dry erase, just for the sake of, all right. of show and tell. Hopefully this dry erase marker works. Let's see. Yeah. Hey, hey, there it is. We've kind of used up a bunch of our markers. Um, oh, see, there's one. There's a dead one. We'll just, uh, <laughs> we, we use them a lot. There we go. Uh, I want to do multiple purples. Cool. Um, so with the dry erase markers, of course, they have the same properties as any other dry erase marker. You draw, you dry on the board, and then they will they will wipe right off. Um, and that's that's to be expected. If you put it in your bag like this, it's probably going to to wipe off. But the difference is is that when you actually wipe it off with your fingers, they come off as opposed to staying like they would on many of the current boards, uh, which is. Which is what's kind of great. You can you can do that quick adjustment without necessarily having to uh, pull out the water or wipes or what have you. Cool. Let's see. Let's do a little wet erase here. Let's just yeah. scribble on the board a little bit. We're gonna let it sit and dry for a second. Um, now these markers have the have the eraser on the head, which is kind of a nice deal. Um, the markers that we provide. Ooh. See uh, there. There we go. Yeah, wet wet erase. Doesn't quite come up with your finger, um, but that's okay because you can spray that with alcohol. Actually, you can spray the wet erase with water, and it'll yeah. come up. What's interesting <laughs> really is did. that uh, <laughs> really didn't need that much spray. But you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> What's interesting is if you uh, if you if you lay down permanent marker and you put wet erase marker on there, the wet erase marker will come up with water, whereas the permanent marker will not. Which is, uh, which is an interesting behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are varying degrees that you can do, and there's a bunch of layering that you can do with the markers that you couldn't do with traditional dry erase boards without destroying the boards. Yeah. So here, here let, me, uh, let, me, let me draw some, uh, some, some permanent marker mm -hmm. here. This is a Sharpie. So permanent, permanent markers are alcohol-based, as, as you know. Um, and what that means is that if you use a little bit of alcohol, they will, they will come off. What we discovered with most current dry erase boards um, is that you can, you can, you might be able to get the permanent marker off, but it's going to just stay in this. This is kind of a cool effect um, if you're trying to, to put something on, on your grid uh, and, then, and then not have it come off easily. One of the things we did when we were working on that video that is at the top of the Kickstarter is we, we drew the table. I probably should draw this over there so everybody can see it. But we actually drew the table with the players in their seats for the shot. And then with the dry erase marker, uh, we would figure out where those cameras would be placed like this. And then when we wanted to change up that shot, we would just wipe away the dry erase. And so the effect you get is really pretty neat in that you can you could effectively draw a dungeon and I'm just gonna do this really really rough um, you can draw your dungeon and the walls super duper rough so forgive me if this is not perfect um, and then if you wanted to do something inside of it you could have it effect like here's a we'll just say this is a portal of some sort uh, heck we'll even make it purple for the sake of Nope, not oh no, one. it's a dead one. There you go. This one gets to go throw it that way as well. Throwing it away. Yeah. You can draw, put this down, and then as your players complete whatever whatever that uh, event is, you just wipe it away, and you can see it stays. Yep. So what's so with that? Here's our alcohol again. I'm gonna do you. I'll do yours first. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and you really don't need this much. It's just for the sake of. Uh, moving quick, we're just going to use a little bit more than we Ooh. normally would. Oh, you got I my table. I took off some of your table there. Yeah, here, actually, you're getting kind of a, a blue hue. Yeah. There you go. Um, Sometimes you'll see a little bit of the color left over. That just means that you still have yeah. the ink on the paper towel, and you uh, <clears throat> probably just need a cleaner paper towel to just go over it one more there time, you. and it cleans right up. I got you. And then we got mine as well. Um, and if you do kind of a Swiffer sort of motion, uh, it's easier to get it off because you're not just rubbing it all over the place. 
So it takes a minute to figure that out. But um, that's pretty, pretty great if you're wanting to throw this in your bag and take it to a friend's house. You're not going to have to ex experience it rubbing off. So yeah, that, if, you, if you wanted to uh, to draw your dungeons beforehand, that's something that I did in a lot of games. I would draw I would draw my dungeons beforehand and then pull them out as a big surprise, so I didn't have to spend a lot of time working on them. We have tried a lot of different markers. This is a um, artisan acrylic. Uh, acrylic marker. Give it a little shake. Now this thing, the color that comes out of this is. Gorgeous, and you'll you'll actually see the use of this marker on that demonstration board that you wrote that had all the stuff on it. Yeah, that was that that was this mm -hmm. exact marker. The yeah. cool thing about acrylic markers is they actually write over yeah. the uh, grid lines, which so, is really cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool effect that you don't get with other markers. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy because then I have to wipe it off. Yeah, uh, but we've discovered even further. Here's another one, um, and this is a. Uh, acrylic twin one for all marker. I love these markers. I use these for drawing all the time. And the black that comes out of this is just beautiful. Um, so we'll wipe those off in a minute because we're going to have to go over it. But here's a Copic. Oh, a Copic. Nice $5 marker for you. Uh, here's a Prismacolor of the same, the same vein. Ooh, I don't know how to use uh, a Copic. Use, use the other side because it has okay. the chiseled tip. That sure. Should come right out. Yeah, those Copic markers are beautiful. As you yeah. can see, uh, all over the Kickstarter, it is my beautiful and terrible handwriting that yeah. uh, that you see everywhere. Um, uh, here's the here's the, the Prismacolor. Prismacolor purple, and these are just uh, they're just great. Yeah, you're not seeing my handwriting for for good reason. Uh, the the uh, the colors and the color spectrum that using markers like this allows you is is just astounding. You have so many options for doing two D <clears throat> hand drawn maps, and you really don't need you don't need expensive markers. These prism color markers look amazing. Uh, they're alcohol based. Uh, here's another one. This one's a very light green, or like a lion color. Um, even further, and we discovered this actually tonight of all nights. Um, this is a liquid chrome marker. So what you're going to get is the ability to, you know, put down swords. <laughs> swords. Swords, if you feel so inclined. Uh, being able to put down chrome color and copper color and gold color and all of this really adds a totally different level. Yeah, you can to, use to metallic to markers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, we got that, that metallic in there. Yeah. Um, so we'll give this a second for these to dry up. Yeah. Uh, just so you can see that, that uh, you know, they they don't smudge or come off. Uh, that one kind of did because it wasn't fully yeah, this, dry. Yeah, this will definitely. Any of the acrylic ones are going to take a couple minutes yeah. uh, to dry fully, but when they dry, they're on there. Yeah, when they dry, they're... Uh, they, mm -hmm. they stay on until you hit them <coughs> with alcohol or acetone. Yeah, we we really wanted to build a great product that was durable, that would last you. Oh, it looks like it came up. That would last a long time. You're going to be using these for your games, and, and I mean, some people are playing two, three times a week, and if that's the case, you should be able to pack these up, put them in your bag, and head to wherever you're going to go. Or if you want to put them on your table and leave them on your table. You should be able to, and, and, and we, we guarantee the quality of these. That's really important for us. Our manufacturers are local in the US and they've worked very, very hard to make sure that these are perfect. Um, the QA process is like 99.5% or something in terms of quality, which is incredible. Um, and if it, if it shows up at your door and it looks bad, then we're going to obviously honor that relationship that we've built with you and make sure that we get you a nice set that looks the same. Even more so, the white will look the same across this version and future versions because they're using a, a tool. They're using tooling that ver verifies that uh, that shade of white. So we're really working very hard to make sure that this is an incredible product and fits very very well with your with your stuff. And and it's you know it's like buying a buying an iPhone. We want it to be great for yeah, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so why don't we why don't we clean these up? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's 
get into uh, magnetics. Let's talk about magnets. Let's use the acetone to uh, to speed this up a little bit. You have okay. plenty of paper sure. towels? No, I don't have any paper towels. Okay. Give me some of those bad boys. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to show you all the crazy magnetic stuff we've we've been working on. Um, we have built a really awesome relationship with our artists. Um, our artists have, you know, quite a bit of talent, and we want we want to really make sure that we we present their work at the highest possible level, obviously, and we want them to benefit from that as well. So we've put a lot of energy into um, making sure that they receive. Look uh, at that! As I spray it with the acetone, yeah, you can right see the ink Oops. beating up there. I'll just use the. I didn't wipe it off fast enough. It dries immediately. But the acetone's great. It's uh, that will get really deep where you want it. Um, As part of our Kickstarter, we are offering cleaning kits, um, and that's just uh, stuff that that we recommend. You know, we're going to send it out with all of the grid orders. Um, but it's not limited to just using that no. set. You can actually take the, the cool spray bottle that we're going to provide for you and fill it right back up with acetone or alcohol from your local store. Yeah. Um, so super cheap, super easy, and everything. We, so, we wanted you to be able to use it right out of the box. And not, I don't know a lot of people that have uh, spray bottles just sitting around full of alcohol. So we, we thought it would be you know, respectful for us to send you a cloth and, and send you alcohol right out of the gate. Um, and it doesn't affect the cost of your Kickstarter um, backing. So there it is. Let's, uh, let's talk about the artist sets and some of these uh, 2D pieces that we have printed out. Um, we, we printed out some, uh, so we, we have the artist sets and we have the, the partnership with uh, just some amazing artists, just people that I've respected for a very long time as a, as a player and as a regular user of places like DMs Guild. Um, these are people whose maps have just blown me away for, for an extraordinary amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just, I, I love every one of them. And I'm just so happy that we're able to work with them and uh, that they're making us super cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so <coughs> what we did for our Kickstarter video and uh, kind of in the preliminary phases is we printed out some of the existing stuff that they had uh, and some, some things that they sent us directly and we broke it down into elements uh, that some of them are, are laser cut, cut out. Um, so the yeah. background will be, uh, it's, it's, they're printed on very we're, 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 durable let's try to do this distance magnetic sheeting that you can just kind of throw down mm -hmm. uh, and they kind of act as a as a skin yeah, well, sort of for yeah. for the grid um, we call these our environments we call these environments mm -hmm. we we have we have a couple different types of, of uh, pieces that we've created um, we have environments we have scenes. Scenes, which are these. These would be more like a scene. This is um, pre-made, where and it shows exactly what's here. This is more of an environment where it's a grass or. Yeah, yeah. And those environments generally don't have any static elements on them, and they'll let you kind of choose where you want those static elements to go. Um, and the static elements themselves mm. are called uh, hmm. elements. <laughs> ah, go yeah, figure. Yeah, how about that? We had other names for them, but elements seem to work pretty well. I cannot find the other grass, so we're going to have to just do snow on this one. I don't know where I put it. I'm forgetful, so bear well, with me. That's what happens when it's live, folks. Yeah. So uh, here we go. There's a snow version of this. The way this is supposed to, supposed to work is that this would um, either lay over top of it, or or the or we have reversible reversible ones, which we can we can show. Uh, those are not part of our Kickstarter in until we break some, some levels. Um, and we can talk about that a little bit more if we need to. But there you go. Here's another snow one as well. There it is. Um, pieces. So yeah, I mean, you could use something like this to reflect a uh, change in seasons going from mm -hmm. winter to fall, I guess. Yeah. Going backwards on the calendar. We're going <laughs> reverse in time. Hey, winter to fall. Faerun. You don't know. Yeah. 
All right, so... You never know. Some wizard <laughs> casts a spell, and... There you go. Every, everything's going backwards. Well, and here's your, your trees that go along with that one, and here would be a tree for the, for the, uh, mm -hmm. for the green area. Yep. Now, these pieces are very special. Um, these are our prototype double-sided pieces. Most of them right now, and the ones that are coming out with our Kickstarter, are not going to be double-sided. Again, let's, let's break some levels, and then we can talk about that a little bit. But um, these are the two-sided prototype. One side is regular, and the other side is snow. So you can see this one in particular uh, has the, non the snow and the non-snow on that. So I believe, and bear with me on this one for just a minute, I think I might have that backwards. Yeah, there's this, and then I think stacks on top of it just like that. I believe that's right. Yep, same thing with these guys here. So like this, and then this is the snow side. I'll turn the other side over. Like that, and then, uh, is I have that right? Yeah, there you go. Nice. So, kind of a neat effect um, <clears throat> to be able to to expand on your worlds. Obviously, you have lots of trees and things of that nature. Uh, these double sided are pretty cool, but the non double sided are great as well. So here is um, this one. So so these are from Crosshead Studios. Uh, make sure you check them out on Patreon. He has he has a lot of really amazing work. Um, those are the animated. Uh, setups that you've seen quite a bit on Reddit and on on, uh, on uh, our Kickstarter page. Yeah, and on yeah. Kickstarter as well. He's featured very prominently there. Instagram is the word I was looking for. Oh, Instagram. That's yeah. a thing. There you go. That's a thing. Um, so let's uh, oh. let's okay. combine. Let's let's throw down an element that <clears throat> was made by uh, that'd be two minute tabletop. Two that's, minute tabletop. That's Ross. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Here we go. Um, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda Switch things around a little bit. Do you want to put down? Um, a yeah, grassy let's, one? let's put down one of Ross's grassy tiles here. Okay. Uh, and you'll see grassy this. environments. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm using the wrong words. Uh, the thickness on these is a little bit higher. Uh, these are both. These are 15 millimeters, and this is a. Or I'm sorry, 0.15 millimeters, and that's a uh, 0.3. We've actually found that the thinner. The thinner magnets for the environments are much, much nicer. Uh, they're not as heavy to carry around, obviously, but also it doesn't take as much kind of coercing to get them to, to lay down appropriately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, here's another example, though, of mm -hmm. a uh, element or, or a scene. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a scene that you can... We'll, we'll show it off here in a second. Let's, yeah. let's get this cleaned okay. off here. Thank you very much, Crosshead. Thank you, Crosshead Studios. You're awesome. We love you. Yeah, we'll put down the rest of the grass for Monsieur Ross. Um, Two-minute tabletop as well. They are excellent. Um, his work, he's, he's, he's quite prolific. Lots and lots of um, maps on his Patreon and on his website. Make sure you check it out. Uh, along with Crosshead, there's quite a bit of free stuff, but there's also a lot of really awesome uh, non-free stuff that... Um, many people haven't seen, and you can really blow away your, really blow away your your uh, players with some of the stuff that comes out, even if it's not one of ours. Yep. Okay. So there we go. We got some grassland. Uh, so where where do we want this house to go on this grassland? Um, well, we actually can decide that just by doing this. <laughs> I mean, that's that's where we want it to go. Although well, the the house does have a grid on printed on each part of it so mm -hmm. there we go we got a house that's the that's the roof there well and if, um, the, if the neighborhood tavern seems to be the largest building in, in the city there you go oh wow <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah how many people have seen this guy uh here i'll give you some roads and other accoutrement accoutrement uh here's some roads here's some trees uh, now these roads aren't final, so bear with us. Um, we kind of were prototyping it, so there's their size and their dimensions are a little funny, but yep. we can. We our intention is to make those really great. And working with these artists as we put these down, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing. Um, the artists are going to build their own sets based on their own artwork. We've given some, them some really basic kind of thoughts on what we think would work best, but already they've had some some ideas that really blow our ideas out of the water. So what they'll do is they will, um, during and after the Kickstarter, they'll begin putting those together. And in the end, you'll be able to decide 
uh, via Bagger Kit, which of those you would prefer. So if you would like um, one from Crosshead Studios or you would like uh, one from uh, CZE Piku and Two Minute Tabletop or what have you, you can pick out multiple versions um, to put to your table. And then of course down the road, as we build the marketplace out, we'll give you the ability to pick up a variety of things. And we'll show some of that stuff off here as we, as we continue building this out. Here's some boulders. So to build a, okay, we'll build the, the, old, the old Johnson's house. It's abandoned. Well, here's, a, here's a more, another piece oh, of that. There we go, yeah. And here's some more crumbly rocks. Mm -hmm. you know, shall, we, shall, we add, nope. shall we add spirits to this house? Monsters? Uh, we can in a moment. Okay. Let's show off the uh, the two D yeah. first, and then uh, and then we'll toss down some some. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All set. Uh, we got some some foliage too. If you wanted to mm. put some uh, some bushes alongside your road, uh, just kind of mm -hmm. giving it a little bit of a three D feel. There yeah. you go. There you go. Perfect. So that's how easy it is. You just set it up yeah. like that, um, and say. Uh, these were all, you know, yeah, too we'll, big. Let's just set these off to the side. And let's move this guy down a little bit so that we can pick this up, this one up here too. Okay. Yeah, and the point, the point with this isn't just, hey, you've got nice magnetic pieces. It's that they're they stick, so you can throw this into your bag, and they won't slide off. And we've put a lot of energy into figuring out how how this works. Um, it's important to us that we allow you the ability to move this stuff around so it's highly highly portable and so the magnets that we're working with um, are a combination of things sometimes they're double-sided sometimes they're single-sided depending on the on the use case but they're they're really really well made um, they're rubberized and we print directly on the magnet as opposed to on top of the vinyl that way they stick um, to each other without any difficulty at all which is very 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 unusual you're not going to see that on anything pretty much Yep. So okay. what happens if an adventurer opens the door to that house? Oh, this house or the... Or the oh, let's go with the house first. Okay, we'll start with the house. So um, there is an attic in here, but we'll, we'll just dive down into the home. Now this, if you look as we dive in, uh, this is cut, so it's a, an attic hole. Very, very smart two minute. And there is the first floor, which seems to be just an assorted house here. We'll throw some throw a bed in there about that <laughs> we'll put it right on top of that just just so we can change it up a little bit there's a bed uh, we can put one up on a higher floor here's a, a table that we'll put in an awkward position as well and a piano there you go beautiful there you go we'll just lay over top of what's already there yeah um, and then if we wanted to get down to the basement there you go all right so multi-level yeah which is Pretty great. I you have say. the ability to, to make uh, or use multi-level structures mm -hmm. uh, using magnetic sheets, mm -hmm. and they they stick to each other and stay in place. Why don't you stack everything up, and then uh, let's see. Some of these are not sized right, so let's just scoot these out of the way. Yeah, uh, the road the roads are, are a work in progress. So bear with us. And push that, and if we pull this up again, you can see it stays in place. Mm-hmm. So, there we go. Let me help you there. So what if uh, what if somebody went into this crazy tavern here? Well, a tavern's just like the house. Multiple levels. And what's great about this particular tavern is that it has, it has an overhang feature wherein the bottom floor is missing an entire section. So if you wanted to build something out there, if you wanted to put posts or poles or what have you, we could do that. Um, but this is a full-fledged tavern with front doors, porches, all that good stuff, and then an, and then your bottom floor, which is the tavern itself. No, oh. it's got a rock in it mm -hmm. and a tree. Yeah, we can have the the one table off in the corner that everybody sits at. It's your rogues table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your circular table where where you meet your adventuring crew. And here's you can some, see the reason that we call this a scene is because it is a um, it's a it's a building or a space that has pre-made elements on it. So it's got all these barrels. It's got the bar. It's got the mm -hmm. tables. Uh, that's why we call that a scene, and that's why we have the distinction between a scene 
and elements. And elements are, like Zach just threw down, this round table, these chairs. Trees, uh, those, roads. Those would be elements. The trees, the roads. And mm -hmm. then the, the grass back here, because it has no static <clears throat> elements, that would be called an environment. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. There you go. What if we wanted to put some minis on here? Well, let's pull out some minis. All right. Uh, here is your barbarian. That's my, my barb, my barbarian. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so well, he's he's in the he's in the tavern. He's hanging out at the bar there. We'll place our orc, or ogre, excuse me, over in the corner here. Um, this poor guy is missing missing his army. He's been mistreated. What else? What do we have here? We put our we put our minis through the ringer, uh, <laughs> setting all this up. Yeah. So some of them are are yeah. unfinished. Some of them are <laughs> we've uh, been prototyping quite a bit. Yeah, so. we've been prototyping a lot. Well, there's a zombie hanging out over there by that tree. I'm gonna grab a um, magnet as well because yeah. I think we can put a magnet on. There's some of these. Uh, some here. of these that we have here are, well, some of them are unpainted, uh, but that's okay. Um, some of them don't have magnets in them yet, and we wanted to pull them out to give you an idea of uh, just how easy it is to stick a magnet to the bottom of one of your existing miniatures. Um, here you go. So here is a, an adhesive magnetic disc. Uh, my hand is covered in blue. Uh, an adhesive magnetic disc. Uh, it's got this paper on one side. So I'm just gonna pull that paper off. There we go. And who are we gonna stick? Let's stick uh, <laughs> well, if you're gonna row, you're, gonna, if you're a row, <laughs> you're gonna stick all kinds of people. So I just flipped that over right into the base of this adventurer here, and I just press it into place, hold it for a second, and it is stuck into place. And oh, there's now, two. Oops. She is magnetized. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and again we we come back to the idea that if you know Steve decides he's going to I'm gonna drink for this particular oh, yeah, yeah. show off. If Steve decides he's going to push the table around, it's not going to move everything around. And that's, and that's one of the really, really exciting pieces of this is it's going to stay where it is. And if you're done and you want to eat dinner, you can just pick the thing up, put it away, and come back to it later on. And this isn't just for D&D, &D, obviously. If you have other games that have the same kind of situation, this will work for that as well.